in the ears. Okay, anyway, three areas. Number one, folks, as a Christian, the biggest, one of the biggest tools the enemy uses against us as Christian people, because he hates us. We represent God, okay? And so he wants us to make us all embarrassed, all look lousy, stupid, all these things. He wants to make us appear in front of others. So one of the things that we don't want to feed to him is what gives him the energy to do that, amen? Would you want to hand the gun to your enemy who shot you with it? No, but that's what people do. He's programmed society, the world system, to give us things that don't work, so we chase the proverbial carrot. And we always have hope in front of us, but we never seem to get it. Well, Jesus will work all that out for you if you'll meet with him and let him be your Lord. Say amen. So the first one I want to bring up is indifference. Everyone say indifference. Satan uses indifference to feed off. Okay, for example, let me paint a, if my wife has her favorite baseball team, this is a, this is a cheap one, and I have my favorite baseball team, and everything is fine until she brings my, her team's playing my team, and I'm rooting for my team, next thing you know, I'm starting to say some things, and she's starting to say some things, Now I'm just giving you a scenario, I hate scenarios, but that's what it is. What's building there? Indifference. Hello? How about the church up the street with the church down the street? Have you ever seen them get together and have a potluck? Because of indifference. I went and visited all the pastors in this area when I was looking for a church and looking to start a church to see what was going on, if they needed any help. If y'all up for a square? Calvary Temple, there was a place called uh, Joy Fellowship in Bonnie Lake. All of these I helped and, and worked with it because I knew that one day I'll be back in the ministry. But you know, I saw a lot of indifference. What color am I? White. If there's a black person, if we're not careful, there could be indifference. We call it another name, but that's not an, a right name. So what the devil tries to do is to get you to be at odds with those who obey God. Have you ever felt it? For example, let's say Linda and I go home and you did something in church. So Linda and I start talking about you and saying you had to straighten up. No, no, we're talking together about you and you're not there. You know what that's called? It's called Christian witchcraft. You're casting a spell. So Lynn and I do not discuss any one of you other than positively and good things. We don't talk about your faults. We don't talk about your shortcomings. We don't wonder what you're doing. All these things are what Satan uses to cut and, and to begin to chisel down your effectiveness as a Christian. Okay? So being at odds or being troubled by someone feeds the devil. Have you ever been insulted? Don't raise your hand. And you were troubled by it. How long were you troubled? As long as you were troubled by it, the enemy's feeding off you like a little sapling. You see, he doesn't have any other energy he can get. He needs you to miserably get angry, get mad at somebody, be in strife, be divided, and then he just sucks that energy off you. You're fighting with your mom, fighting with your daughter, fighting with your son, fighting with, you know, follow what I'm saying? And then it seems to escalate. Who's feeding off of that? Everyone say, I got it. Yeah. Indifference. Listen, you might not like the pants I wear. I have to wear them because I only have one leg. But you can be indifferent about it. You might not like what you see out there when we're working on everything, but you don't have to be indifferent about it. 
Hello. And folks, my pastor pulled us aside. We only have 30 people in his home fellowship for the longest time. He trained us and poured the word in us. He says, one of the things that destroys a church is when the people talk about it behind the leadership and they don't come up with a solution. They just talk about all its faults. The enemy will come in and rip that church right apart. Now, you don't want to do that, do you? So look at your neighbors and say, make sure you're not indifferent about anything God's doing in your life. Say amen. Second thing I want is, I call it the interpretism. Folks, I see in society, through the multiple years, the long time that I've been alive, no, <laughs> people don't listen to what people say. They interpret what they mean. Now, what do you think Pastor Kerry's talking in this sermon about? What do you think he's talking? What does it say? <laughs> Satan has used that because you get somebody who listens, but he's in, they are interpreting what the person means when they're talking. That is illegal and not of God. Satan will give you some suggestions. Are you learning anything? I hope. Am I talking to you? Yes. I'm trying to keep you from the stumbling that so many Christians stumble through life and almost give up because Christianity is so hard. No, it isn't. It's getting us to understand where the little foxes are and kicking them out of our lives. Say amen. So do not interpret what people are saying. My dad used to have this. He said, son, do you hear what I'm saying? He says, and I, I'm thinking, yeah, he says, did I make myself perfectly clear? Have you ever read a father that said that? Well, there's a reason. Satan messes up communication. And people who are hurt, they want to interpret. They're looking for you to say something so they can accuse you. People are like that. So what do you do? You pay it no mind. Say amen. You don't feed into that. You don't give the devil the gun to shoot you with. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, all these wonderful giant churches, they get these kind of teachings all the time because they have special little classes and stuff to really fix us all up. But you and I, you and I have too many areas of our life that if we don't go to God about it, it will destroy us later on. How many here know that you're getting older? The Bible says you're supposed to be getting sweeter and loving <laughs> and more hugging her and stuff. Your grandma type. Say amen. But the world and the enemy and that people are trying to get you hard. Don't be hard. Be loving. You know, they couldn't touch Jesus. And he was a man, man. You say, everybody, oh, that was Jesus. No, he walked as a man. He could have sinned at any time and disqualified himself. Come on, let's be real. He came as a man so he could feel how you are, see how you are, and take care of it. Now that we have him in our heart, is he in charge? Third thing is what I call summer corruption. Everyone say, summertime, it's slow and easy. Da, 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 da. Rips people apart. Then all of a sudden, we hadn't had summer. We've got two years of COVID, and now all the sunshine is going, come to me, baby. Come to me. And I've seen Christians through 40 years of destroying themselves because it's summer. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you go on a vacation, bring God with you. <laughs> when you go to the lake, bring God with you. Hello? When you go fishing, bring God with you. When you're enjoying your summer, mowing your lawn and doing all that, bring God with you. You'll have the best vacation, best summer you ever had. But I watch people for years and years and years. They'll go into summer. Now, I'm not picking on, please. You, the enemy will have you think, he's, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. You see, you already got the devil lying to you. But shut that off, okay? Listen, he's ta I'm talking to you because I've seen it. I've done it. Hey, there was a time in my life I went and said, God, God take a hike. I'm going to do my own thing. Do you think that worked very well? 
So summer has a way, the enemy has a way of using good things against God's good people. So be wise in summertime and have a blast. But don't forget to pray, cover yourself with the blood, use a little sunblock. Hello? Because the enemy's there and he, he will use it. Okay, so what do we do? Walk around, be paranoid of the enemy? No, just pray and start your day and say, Lord, summertime. That's when souls and touch lives. This is an end time harvest. You're not going to see much more summers. This could be even the last one. So please don't let this summer rip you all apart and your family because you had to go out and party. Now go out and have a good time, but bring God with you. Say amen. Those are my three themes. Say, thank God he's done with that. series called New Creation Realities. We're going to call this today the God kind of faith. Everyone say God kind of faith. Now a lot of Christians don't know what faith is. They operate in hope, but they're not in faith. They're wishing. If I could have, I should have, I wishing. Lord, if I just had. And God says, no, that's why you have me. I'm willing to get these things and work these things out with you. But see, if God gave you money, you got to be mature enough to know what to do with it. If God ever gave you a husband, make sure you don't abuse him or a wife. You're mature enough to love them. Come on, say amen. You're living in a broken society that really knows nothing about the faith and the God kind of faith. So let's go ahead and share. Greetings to you, family. Today we're going to reveal the mystery and the faith of God in us. Having faith in God pleases God. It causes a God to answer and to be attracted to us because we believe and he is, then he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's why I seek God every day, every morning, first thing. Before I sip coffee, and before I take a have to eat some, some kind of form of nourishment because of my situation, before I do anything, God gets greeted and I welcome him. I ask him to cleanse me and Lord, let none of my prayers be hindered so that when I cover you and others of the family of God, you're, you're, you're being covered and my prayers are not being restricted. Say amen. And God wants you to be able to do those things as he asked you to do, empowering you to do them. Say amen. God never asks you to do something. He's not going to help you to do it ever because he knows you can't totally do it on your own. That's not an insult. That's just our brokenness. Have you ever really tried to do something and you just were real clumsy at it? Don't raise your hand. I'll raise mine, but yeah. And who takes our clumsiness and turns it into something? So why would we want to stay away from him? Well, he might see me doing this and doing that. He's already seen you. My God, he's seen you naked. That's enough to scare anybody. <laughs> Laugh with me. All right. Boy, you guys are solemn today. Why are you so solemn? Did you do something wrong? Let's pray. No. So let's go on. See, the world has been led astray, folks, about God. They've been told all these lies. They've been given religion, all kinds of things. Look at India and all the temples. That was all made by fallen angels and demons. Human beings never made any of those. And the whole idea was to get humans to worship him. Remember, we are God's crown creation. God made us in whose image? God's image after his likeness. That means we're the only one like us in the entire universe. There's not other godly humanoid planets we're bouncing around. No. 
There's no other creatures out there visiting the planet. We'd kill them. Gosh, we nuked our own people. How dumb is that? Hey, we'll fix them. We'll drop a nuke on them. And you ever notice, as soon as that nuke exploded, all these demons showed up, all these flying saucers started hanging out in the air. You, tr you trace the history. Satan said, you're ruining my planet. Remember, Satan thinks this is his planet. But we are here to remind him that this belongs to God's planet and belongs to us. Amen. Amen. It's not Satan's planet, but he wants it. So what is he doing to it? He's getting human beings to deny God and to serve him. Hello? Oh, sure. Deny God. Amen. Listen, I don't care if you're falling down drunk. Don't you ever deny God. You're liable to die in your own puke. Do you understand me? It's time for us to really open up and not realize this, you know, there's people playing church games. Not you, but plenty of them, they think they're saved. He that thinketh these stands, take heed lest he fall. The idea is don't get all caught up in your goodness, but be caught up in his goodness. Say amen. All right, let's get on this, because I don't want you to think I'm picking on you. Would you open your Bibles and let's look at our scripture behind us. This is Ephesians 3, 14 through 20. And then you go to Luke 17, please. In Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21, I think it's 20 actually, but that's okay. All right, stops. Okay, it says, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, bowing your knees means you respect him, you love him, from whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Through his spirit, look where. Where are you strengthened? In the inner man. That's your spirit man. 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Through faith, you got to believe in him. That you being rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height. Next. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Everyone say, fullness. fullness. Are you full yet? No. Fullness. And verse 20 says, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. How big are asking and thinking are you? According to the power that works in us. See, the power is in you. To him be glory to the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. That's God's love for you. That's God's desire for you. That's how he wants you to believe in him. He's got you filled with power. But what's taken over? Well, our negativity. We're seeing what's wrong with everything. You know, if I did that as a pastor, we'd never go anywhere. Because all I would see was what needed to be fixed. How many know God's better than that? Yeah. We look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. <clears throat> Luke 17. Now, without faith, it's impossible to, believe, to please God. Do you believe that? The Bible says without faith, this is Hebrews 11, 6, it's impossible to please God. So if you're doubting, can you please God? Folks, most of us have some doubt somewhere. We want God to wash it out of us. Amen. And you say, don't turn around and figure out where your doubt is. Satan will have you chasing a carrot. Ask God, clean up all the doubt out of my life. Clean it out, Lord. I submit to you, clean the doubt. Now, you don't have to be specific in that case with God. He knows you have some junk he has to get rid of. Say amen. I had a junk haulers come over here and take care of some things. Thank God. 
Now I can put a new floor and we can make it a food pantry like it's supposed to be. Buy a new freezer, flat freezer and refrigerator and begin to facilitate our neighborhood with food if they need any. Say amen. We're supposed to be a church for our neighborhood. We're supposed to be facilitating our community, not running all over the planet trying to win souls and impress people. Right. Not us, anyway. Right. Our job is to win this neighborhood, if we can, by God's grace. Let's go on. Look at this, what it says. Verse uh, 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, remember, this is about the, Lord, the God kind of faith, right? What did the apostles say? And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our they knew that faith was a key. So they came to Jesus and asked him. I'm getting up pretty lightheaded, so I'm going to pause for a minute. So the Lord said, if you have faith, see the word if, people never get this. If means there's going to be one day you are. If you have, in other words, it's possible. But see, this is Old Testament, isn't it? Jesus hadn't died and rose again. So this kind of faith that Jesus is talking about, the mustard seed faith, is not in humans yet. It's going to come in when they accept Jesus. Okay. Now, he says, if you have faith, let's forget the mustard seed, okay? If you have faith like a seed, what does a seed do? It grows. If God's seed in you of faith, if you keep meeting with him, stay consistent, Sherry's greatest word, it will grow. And you won't have little faith, you'll have bigger, bigger, bigger faith. But you've got to stay consistent and don't let anything in the way. Folks, when you committed to something, don't change your mind. The Bible says, let your yea be yea and your nay. If something else has created a change. It says, swear to your own hurt, but don't change. Because what you'll do is you'll open a door and a lot of people will suffer because you're changing God's will because of somebody else's situation. Don't do that. Someone say, oh, okay. So he says, look, and the Lord says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Now you're going, wow, that's pretty heavy. Your words are not going to uproot that tree. All the angelic forces are going to do it for you after your words are spoken. You know when I bind the devil and I cast the devil out of somebody? I think some, somebody here saw me cast the devil out of a brother here once. He, God picked him up and threw him across the floor. That would have blown your mind. I think Linda was here and Sherry was here when that happened. It was a religious spirit. One of the worst spirits you can ever have as a Christian as a religious spirit harassing you because it will blind your mind and you're the only one right in the room. Anyway, when I cast that devil out of him, the devil knows I know he's there because he can see my spiritual eyes focused on him. And then I looked at Jesus, I asked God to come in and give me the power, and then boom, the enemy has to flee. Say amen. It's no big deal. No big deal. But I bet you haven't, you're probably around devils a lot and don't know it. But it's only until God shows you when to deal with them. Can you say amen? And I, I'm bringing that up is because picture a, a person with a demon like a mulberry tree. It wasn't my words that caused the spirit to leave. It was the power backing my words. God. Say amen. And it isn't you that you're so special, because you are, but that isn't it. It's God in you that makes you wonderful. Can you say amen? You were wonder be wonderful before, but now you're super wonderful. Now you need to nurture that walk. Nurture that walk. Because everything you tried to do didn't come out quite right. Don't get mad at me because I'm preaching real good. I didn't, it didn't happen to me either. Okay, so let's go on. I want you to note something, okay? Go with me to Mark chapter 10, please. 46 through 52. I'm going to read rather quick. And then we're going to cover four quick things, okay? Mark 10, verse 46. 
God believes that we should believe in him. Say amen. Did God believe in us? God so loved the world that he, his only begotten son. How would you, what if, you know, what if uh, my wife, her only child, and God says, I'm going to require you, your only child to pay for this family who hates you. And Jesus, I'll go for them. I'll go to rescue them. Now, folks, you, you don't see everybody saved, do you? If they knew the goodness of God, more people would just flock to God. But Satan's got a religious blinder going. All this false stuff, keeping people from coming to church, kept you from coming. And now you're here. Wonderful. Don't stop coming. Who are we listening to? All right, goes on. And it says, Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho, his disciples and a great multitude, a blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timotheus, sat at the road begging. And when he had heard it was Jesus, how does faith come? He had heard who was coming? Faith cometh by. Sutton got his attention. He'd been hearing about this Jesus. Okay. So what did he do? And when he had heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, folks, if I did it in the volume, he's going, son of David. He's, just, he's desperate. Folks, every day when you get up, come to God like you're desperate. You might not be. In fact, you might be so summarized, you don't even think to pray. Go to God like you're in desperate need. Watch what happens. This, guy, this guy's reaching out in what? What is that ringing noise? When he reaches out, he's reaching out by what? Yeah. When you reach out to God, you reach out by? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Jesus is moving on the faith of people crying out for help. Now, let me ask you, all the people who cried out to Jesus for help, were they all saints? Were they religious righteous? They're all sinners. Their life was a mess, just like ours. So every day, learn to ask God to get involved. You have not because you ask, oh, he knows, doesn't he? Without invitation, he's going to watch. The watching turns into working with you when you ask. Look at, it goes on. Then he cried out, saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. And many warned him to be quiet. Isn't that just like religious people? Hey, be quiet. Don't bother Jesus. You're just a blind man. Get out of here. How do we treat people? I was a guy's buddy until I thought I went after his girlfriend. Now he hates me. What kind of Jesus love is that? Don't you do silly things like that. Say amen, somebody. Now listen, I have a wife of my dreams. She's better than I could ever hope for. Okay? Why would I want to search for anything more? You know how long it took me to train her? <laughs> it's a joke. Learn to laugh because your pastor loves you guys, and I am just as human as you are, but I am a righteous man, and I don't run around sinning. Okay, and that means that I want to be able to help and not be a hypocrite. Say amen. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Uh, you know, so we want to make sure. Okay, so it goes on further. And they say, hey, be quiet. And so Jesus stood still, it says. You want to get Jesus to stand still? Cry out. God, help me. Lord, help me today. I want to start off the day because I think I know something. But Lord, I'm just asking for help. Guide my steps. Put me in positions of prosperity and positions where I can make friends and influence people. How about that? Hello. Jesus stood still and commanded the man to be brought to him. And they called the blind man, Bottomus, and he the, and said, Be of good cheer. You got through. <laughs> 
That's where a lot of Christians are. They cry out to God and say, I don't think God's hearing me. Boy, there you go for thinking again. God hears you every moment. There's not a hair of your head that doesn't fall off here. And believe me, he knows me. And we go to telling God, oh, God, you're down hearing my prayers. And he's sitting right there going. You know what, the Bible, there's two things you need to be very careful as a Christian. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your delivery system and your sanctimonial system that keeps you right with God in this planet. To grieve him means to shove him away. Then what are you going to have? Then there's another scripture that says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. If God tells you to stick with something and then you change your mind, you quench the fire that's burning in you. You don't put it out. You just dim it. So learn to grieve with God and his spirit, and don't learn to grieve God's spirit, nor quench him when he's leading you. Say amen. amen. Or get in the way of somebody being led of the Lord. Okay. Woo. Man, the power of God's on me. So it said, so Jesus brought him to him. And now look what he says. And throwing aside his garments, he rose up and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? What? I thought everything we had to do for him. You got it all wrong, Sammy. God is so willing to do things for you, but he's not going to put something in your life when you're rotting. When you're in sin, he's not going to add to your life because you kill it. You wipe it out. So you go to God and have God help clean us and help adjust us so we're operating and functioning the way we're supposed to. Has nothing to do with the, taking, getting rid of this and getting rid of that and doing this and watching your friends and all that stuff Satan's telling you. It has to do with you meet with God so he can tweak you in your heart and get you to grow up because Satan has sold you lies all your life. I can't you get you to go with God, you're never going to straighten up. You're always going to have problems. So my job is to encourage you, encourage you. That's why I look at you and say, I'll see you at church. Are you going to come to church? Ah, oh, that, that crabby old preacher just wants people at church. No, I actually want your life saved. I want to see you forever in heaven. I don't care where you've been. God says, today is a new day. Let's go from today on. You blow it, let's go from today on. God knows he's got a family in this God-forsaken place called Earth. It's beautiful, but it's got a devil in it. The devil is going rampant, destroying everybody, everything. The only ones that are protected are the ones that dwell in the kingdom of God and walk with Jesus. Say amen, somebody. If you don't know how to do that, you better learn quickly because these are the end times and you're going to see thousands of people wiped out with diseases and stuff because the church has gotten so weak. We need to rise up. Say amen. Woo. Glory to God. All right. Cover these four things. Number one, how can they know without a preacher? Faith comes by what? So if nobody bothers to tell anybody anything, how are they going to know? You've got to be willing to tell someone, even if they don't want to hear it. Say, look, I'm going to tell you because I love you. You might be screaming at me right now, but I love you so much, and God loves you so much. It's a better life than the miserable person you, you were becoming, you see. I was a miserable person. Gosh, when people first shared with me, I had a bong in my hand and one of those extendo beers and then some Baptists come up on my porch to tell me about Jesus boy did we have fun that day their prayers worked look at me I'm a product of their prayers and other people's prayers I didn't do this I disagree with God and he did it in me so stop fighting so hard and surrender every day and let God do it in you he'll make, he'll make you so cool 
that you'll even be pleased with what he's doing in your life. Can you imagine that? Instead of having heartaches and trying to drink a beer to forget about the mess you made the other day. Now, I'm not against you this and this and this. It's not what goes in you that defiles you. It's what comes out of your babber babber. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I just say, blah, 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 Hello? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Slippeth. Speaks. All right, four things. How can we know without a preacher? Two, faith and reasoning. What's the difference? Three, our faith, God's faith. And four, now abideth faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. Let's begin. You're kidding me. We had a sermon already. All right. How can we know without a preacher? Go with me, Romans chapter 10, please. We're in the New Testament. We have a different set of rules, a kingdom, everything set up for us where Jesus is Lord. Say amen. Okay. It says, but the righteousness of faith speaks this way. If you're going to be a child of God, there's a way you speak and there's a way you don't speak. Hello? We need to speak faith. Say amen. amen. Faith is trust in God. Faith is believing in God, holding fast to the things of God. When somebody says, well, how come this is going wrong in your life? Speak faith. Well, because somehow there might have been an opening, but God's got this. That's faith. Now, this is not faith. When your nose is running 60 yards to tell somebody, oh, I'm healed. And your, and your nose is running, better to speak faith. My nose is in rebellion, but by faith I'm healed. You see how I said that? So it doesn't sound to the other person like you're lying. Are you lying all the time? Liars never make heaven. So talk the truth or don't talk. Take a breath, everyone. Now you guys know I'm not preaching at you, right? Well, you're looking right at me. I, I have somebody say, you're looking right at me. No, I was looking at the person behind you. What does it look like you're looking at? Have you ever seen one of those pictures where wherever you, wherever you look, it looks like the picture's looking at you? Come on now. Okay. All right, so let's go on. Look what it says. It goes on further. It says, it says who will descend into the abyss? It says, this is how righteousness is talking. Who will bring Christ down from above and who will go down into the abyss and bring him up what does that sound like religion doesn't it how many here we don't know that we don't need to pray and say God come down and help me when you pray like that you're ignorant he already came down and helped you he's in your heart so stop talking like as if he's not there And let's put you in a religious institution where you have to talk to a priest first. Let's not. You talk to God direct. He's always listening. Catch this. But how does righteousness speak? Verse 10. For with the heart, one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, here's speaking again, confessions made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture says, who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. Black, white. Don't bring distinctions. Don't bring separations up. Bring agreements. Say amen. And it goes on, so there is a distinction between the Jew, the Jew and the Greek, for, uh, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Now, they shall call on him. How shall they call on him if, whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear if somebody doesn't go preach? That's for the rest of it. And then so, people that are ignorant don't know any better, so faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. You're getting a lot of faith, a lot of answers to stuff, but you won't know it until the Holy Spirit brings it back to you in remembrance. That's the neat thing about it. Say amen. amen. All right, so we need you and others 
myself, to be sharing the good news to our friends, our relatives. Have you got some relatives that really kind of love God, but they haven't got a clue who he is? Share, share, but share what you know, and don't go into areas you don't. Just say, I'm a preacher for that. So share your testimony, share what you know, read the scripture, but don't try to convince them of anything. See, I'm not trying to hear to try to convince you of anything. The fact that you're experiencing things is because your own love reached out and, and got a hold of God. Not me telling you better straighten up or else, you see. There's a lot of preachers that way. Same six people come to the altar every Sunday because they don't bother to clean up their life during the week. Moving right along. Let's go to the second point. Faith and reason. 15 inches between your head and your heart. Say amen. And when I say heart, I'm not talking about your thumper. I'm talking about the very core of your spirit person. You have a spirit being. That's the core of your being. And then the upper part of that core is your mind. So your mind and your spirit make the heart of you as an individual. So the Bible says if we try to walk with God with just our thinking, how well do you think we'll do? Come on now, speak up. How well do you think you could follow God with just your reasoning? Not well at all. You might think you're doing good, but no, no. We need God's wisdom. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Why? Because immediately we want to keep searching our understanding for how to deal with this present problem. And the problem with that is because all our understanding comes from the past and past experiences. It doesn't come from the Lord. So when we get into reasoning, we're pulling out old underwear out of the drawer trying to figure things out. Instead, go to God says, I need your wisdom. I need to know what to do and how to do it. Thank you, Lord. And it comes out of your spirit, out of your inner core. I keep doing this, but this is the inner core of my being, not here. Don't follow this. This will tell you to have one too many. This will tell you to act like a jerk. And if you listen to it, guess what? You get the prize. Tag, you're it. Satan plays games with us. Don't let him play a game with you. All right? And then certainly don't blame me for your problems. I'm giving you a big hand. A round of applause. A seal of approval. Anyway, I used to be a youth pastor, so I know them all. Not really. I had a youth group of over 100 kids in Renton called the Highlands, the Hood. God did that and taught me how to pastor. Nothing, it's pretty hard to pastor kids, but I tell you what's harder, adults. Because they can look you right in the face and lie to you. I did that. No, you didn't. God said, no, you didn't. I did that. No, you didn't. You see, don't do that. Just go with God. Say amen. Say, oh, me. So, 15 inches reasoning, faith. Who lives in you? Okay. You see, when I was a young one and I wasn't saved, somebody came and shared Jesus with me. I didn't take it that time, so somebody else came and shared Jesus with me. And somebody else came and watered it, and a little more. And finally, my cousin came, and guess who got Jesus in his heart? Little planting, a little watering, little planting, a little watering, little planting, and bing, suddenly it starts growing. Don't give up on the young'uns. Can you say amen? Keep sharing the word. All right. But it takes faith to be saved. Can you say amen? Well, go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look at what faith really is by the Bible. Faith and reason. Hebrews 11, 1 and 3 and 5 and 6, okay? We're going to look at 1 through 3 and verses 5 and 6. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders, those that are mature, obtained a good testimony. So what is faith? 
It's the substance of things hoped for. What is hope? Hope is your dreams, your visions, the things you desire for the future. Say amen. So what does faith do? It brings substance to the things you hope for. Now, the problem is, if you're hoping for a man and you go out there and get your own man, he's liable to leave you with a problem. Your job is to go out there and meet the Lord and let God bring you the man or the woman. Then it'll stick. Believe me, I'm a product of that. I went out and hunted my own wife. I have three beautiful children. Did it end up well? Not really. And then this marriage now, I didn't look for marriage, but God brought me a wife. I'd rather have God do it than we go out and do it, it breaks. Come on, he says, what God has put together, no man can separate. Let God put it together. But we're not letting God put it together. Gosh, if I tell you, you know, I want, I want to give you $100, and you scream at me and say, what are, what are you up to? Why do you want to give me $100? I just want to give you $100. Why? You see how corrupted we are? We always are thinking somebody's up to something or doing something. How stupid is that? Let the devil do that to our brain. God doesn't say, hey, be careful of Sherry. She's a weirdo. God never talks like that. He never says one bad thing about his kids. If you ever heard a boy saying, yes, yeah, so-and-so, that's not God. Even Job, in his big problems, God never said one negative word about him. Get with it. Let's get with it. Find out what we're supposed to be doing, and let's take the world. Let's win as many souls before we leave as we can. Someone say amen. amen. So know the difference. As long as you're going to follow God with your head, you're going to fail every time. It's just like the Christian that's trying to work hard to please God. You cannot. Stop and say, God, work hard in me and bring out pleasingness out of me. It's not by our own works of righteousness right doing that we have done but according to his mercy he has saved us now it is God who works in us to do his good will and his good pleasure so if you're going to follow God like a child from your heart you'll have successes you'll have some challenges but you'll have great successes but you get the enemy keeps wanting to pull us into reasoning so we, we hear all of these different things. It could be this, it could be that. Oh, that's going on. What if they do this? What if they don't do this? Hello? How many know that's not faith? So faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, we understand the worlds, our worlds, and the elders' worlds are framed by our words of faith. So that the things which are seen are not made which things do appear. You bring reality of God into your life by your faith. Gone down to verse 5. By faith, Enoch, a type of the church. Now, by faith, Enoch, a type of the church was taken so that they did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he had this testimony that he pleased God. Therefore, without faith, it's impossible to what? Enoch is a type and shadow of the church. Who's going to come and get us any moment? Jesus. We got to get after pleasing him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. What pleases God? Faith pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please. You got to believe in God. It pleases him. Say amen. So you know the difference between reasoning and faith. Reasoning will give you excuses. Faith will get her done. Everyone say, get her done. Ah, oh, you got to excuse me a little bit because I didn't have much breakfast this morning. And, but I'm okay. I'm just lightheaded. So let's go on to the next point. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm just going to quote it for you, that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. So it's already up there. You can just write the description. We're not to put our faith in God, man's wisdom and words. Folks, there's huge churches around. But the pastor's just giving out psychology. No laying on hands, no doing any of those power things. The Bible says our faith stands in the power of God and not just words of man's wisdom. Say amen. All right. Next point. Our faith in God's faith. How many know there's a difference? When you first came to the Lord, whose faith did you come to the Lord on? Your faith. And folks, you didn't even have the faith to come to the Lord. It was a gift. For you've been saved by grace through faith. It is not your own doing, but it is a gift of God. So God gave you the faith to believe in him for it. It came by hearing. Then he gave you the faith so you believe. Then you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. When we accept Jesus Christ into your heart, we have love, joy, peace, on suffering, meekness, gentleness, and faithfulness. Whose faith do we now have in our heart? Yeah, why use our own now? Learn to turn God's faith loose. That's why Jesus said, if you have faith as a seed, the if there is talking about the day that Jesus would be in your heart, that you would have that faith, and it will grow in you if you stay consistent, that you will be able to move mountains, to touch people and they'll be healed, to cast out devils, because faith is like a mustard seed growing in you because you're exposing yourself to God on a daily basis. Someone say amen. amen. So i rather operate out of God's faith because it's a passive, aggressive faith, while our faith is aggressive. I, sometimes I had grunt faith. I'm a just a believing. I'm trusting God. You ever said that? Come on. I call that grunt faith. That's our faith, trying to believe. But now that you've got Jesus in your heart, here's what you do. Lord, I surrender and I allow your faith to carry me. Let me give you an example. When Jesus was in the boat, when they were going to the other side, where was Jesus? He was in the boat. What was he doing? He was sleeping on his trust in his father. We're going to the other side. You want to operate in your faith? Scream and yell, wake up, Jesus. We're perishing. How could you be perishing if I dwell in you? I can imagine him thinking, these guys, we got to get the truth to them. He said, oh, faithless, perverse generation. How long do I have to be with you? You can't pick up on the faith deal. Hello? Remember they came to Jesus, increase our... How about you? Do you need your faith increased? You know how to do it. Go to the faith increaser. Woo! You see, I can, with my faith, believe for things. But I don't believe for, for your healings when I lay for, hands on you. I believe with his faith. So I don't even doubt when I pray for you, you're going to not receive. Now listen, the healing will come, but whether or not you bring it into your being, it's up to you. Every time I say, Father, in Jesus' name, power of God's right there to heal. Two or three are gathered in my name, power of God right here to heal. But you've got to open up and let it in. And you have resistors and don't know it. Get these resistors out of me, God. Get these things that are causing me not to receive out of me. And cry out. And they'll go. But if we don't, we keep falling back in the old habits. Yeah, we got all this. And I don't know. Then it's going to take a lot of regeneration to get you popping through that blockage that you just put up with your lippies. Say, don't preach at me, pastor. No. <clears throat> it's true. I did it for years. 
I got, went to God for, on your behalf, and I said, God, I don't want to get involved in the ministry anymore. I don't want to be involved. I love your people. I love the ministry. God says, well, that's not your choice. It's my choice, and you gave your life to me, right? I said, okay, God. But please, let me do it in such a way that I give the people things so they know to act upon them and, and it will help their walk and that I'm not trying to impress anybody or, and try to get any dazzle anybody. I had my time of that. I've been around the world. I preached hobbin nobbin with all the bobbin hobbins. Do you understand? I'm not impressed by emotional whoopity dippity. I'm impressed by somebody practicing the word and getting what God promised in their life. Pastor, God is so blessing my family. So blessed. That's revival. That's revival. And it's happening with you. And it's happening with you. That is, if you don't oh, get in the way. Say amen. amen. All right. So, our faith, God's faith. How do we release God's faith? You say, Father, I want to operate in your faith today, and I want my faith to come along supporting it, but Lord, help me to walk in your faith and teach me and train me how to speak and how to walk as you walk out with me through the day. Just a little prayer like that, and then believe you receive it, he'll start operating. Remember, when you ask God, he doesn't say, oh, I wonder if I want to do that with you today. No, he goes right into operation. You just forgot you asked. We're looking sometimes for the result when we're seven steps away from it. Why look for the results? Look for the king and allow him to lift your feet in those steps. Moving right along. Say, I got it. Mark chapter four. Uh, what is it? Mark... Chapter 4 says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, then it goes on in Mark, and it says, I want to make sure I get it right, that if you let that seed grow, it will literally take charge over everything. Who's the seed? Jesus. Doesn't he have the faith? Yeah. I'm looking for this one scripture, so I want to make sure I see it here. Okay, go ahead, let's finally, let's get to the last point. Thank you. Man, everything is just really lightheaded around here, but I'm fine. Pray for your pastor now. Look, last point is, now abides faith, hope, and love, or charity, right? Charity is an old English word, which means love in action. That's all it means. Everyone say agape. agape. Not sloppy agape, but <laughs> agape love. Now abides faith. So we know that we need to have faith in God. Say amen. And we do. He says, if you have faith in God, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Say amen. If you don't doubt. Okay. So, yeah. So God's faith develops in us. So we develop it. But here's the thing. Faith is just a part portion. Faith needs something to work for, doesn't it? Faith is a substance of things. So we need to have hope. So we have faith and hope. Let me ask you, what do you see next year at this time in your life? That's hope. You should be seeing a life greater and more blessed than this one now. You're growing. Say amen. When we read the Bible, what does it do to our mind? It gives us hope. It tells us the promises, the hope. Because if we don't have expectations of God, there's nothing that our faith can work towards. Faith is the substance of things. So if you're not hoping, you're not looking for good, you're not looking for this church to grow, then your faith is stagnant. You've got to have hope, excitement. You've got to keep things in front of you. Now by the faith, hope, and then the last one is... Love, that's agape love. Here's how it works. Faith works by love. So you have faith bringing substance to the things you hope for, and the love of God in you supporting that faith, because faith works by love. So if you're not loving people, 
your faith is not going to work. If you're sitting home talking about everybody's fault, you're going to sit in your own cesspool of a lack of faith. And you're going to find everything to criticize, everybody to credit. Hello? No, 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 no. Now abides faith. You got God's faith in you. Now let's get your hope dialed in. What do you desire from God? What do you want me to do for you? God says. Now you're not going to be thinking of lustful things. You're going to be thinking about you want your children to have college education. You want them to turn around for God. And see, these are your hopes. Keep them loud and proud. Because faith is working for those hopes. And love is supporting the whole thing. God is love. And he supports all of that. So say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I have all the faith I'll ever need. I just have to turn it loose. I have to dial up my hope and put it on the good things and the promises of God and not the problems of the world. And I'm filled with God's love. And God right now is going to dose you with a little bit more of it because it supports and causes faith to work. You got it? Say, I have it in Jesus' name. Lord, bless you, keep you, watch over you, comfort you. Lord, help you to get everything you need done. Enjoy your afternoon and know that Linda and I love you, but God loves you even more. Please keep us in your prayers. Please, once in a while, ask us, Pastor, is there anything we can do to help? I'm always asking you. So please, don't forget to ask. Maybe you can do something to help. Read Haggai 1. So keep you in strength.